Hey everybody, it has been a while, but if you look behind me, you'll see that I'm in a new set of scenery. I'm in my new house. I moved across country. I've been gone for a while, and uh, I'd like to get back to what we were doing, but I don't want to sit in 5.4 anymore. That's two versions behind. So the first thing I'd like to do is upgrade this to 5.6. So I'm not going to show you, you know how to download 5.6, but you're going to right click on the U project right here. And you're going to show more options. We're going to switch Unreal Engine version and we're just going to click 5.6 and hit OK and let it generate the project files. After it generates those, we could just open up the U project file in Writer and let it load the project. Now that the project's loaded, now we're just going to hit build and see what it does. Okay, it's going to throw us all of these warnings, but it's going to succeed. But let's deal with the warnings. This in an actor, the net update and the min net update, those have been, they took away direct access, so they give us functions to replace it instead. So if we say um, 100f here and we say set and set these right here. We do set net update and set min net update. There we go. So that takes care of that inside the player state. And then the rest of these are in the ability system component. There's two major changes that they made for first off is that the dynamic ability tags, they got rid of the direct access to it. You, this function that we're going to replace it with still accesses literally the dynamic ability tags, right? It's the exact same container, but now you have to say get dynamic spec source tags. That's all it is. So we're just going to come up here and we're going to say get dynamic spec source tags wherever we see that. Get dynamic spec source tags. We'll handle the activation info in just a second. Get dynamic spec source tags. Get dynamic spec source tags. Get dynamic spec source tags. Okay, so then we're gonna come back down and we need this activation info. Well, the problem is directly on the spec, that's for a non-instance version and non-instance versions of abilities are not supported anymore. So now we need to get all the instances. Well, the, the good news is we want the we want the activation prediction key based off the most recent, most current instance of the ability. So if we go like this, we declare a T-Ray of U gameplay ability pointers that we call, oops, pointers that we call instances. And we set that equal to spec dot get ability instances. And what we could do is get rid of this. Oh, hang on. There we go. What we could do is get rid of this. We can take the instances, and if I want to get the newest one made, I just get the last one, right? And then from there, now that I have that, I can say get current, get current activation info, and from there I can get the activation prediction key. And then we're gonna want that. We want that activation prediction key. And then we're just gonna do this again right here. We're gonna make a T array of U gameplay ability pointer called instances spec dot get ability instances and then this is the instances the last whoa get current activation info do that now if we build after that let's see that it took away all those and it did and it succeeded. So now the update from 5.4 to 5.6, that's all we need to really do. And we're taking care of that. So the next thing I want to do is go over this roadmap is these are the most common things I've talked to people about and what we're going to do. And we're going to have item pickups into the world and drop items, which includes, I need an interaction system so that you can drop them and pick them up. We're going to sort the inventory. A lot of people have asked for sorting. I want to make a currency item, and then we're going to make spawn RNG loot from enemies when you kill the enemies and from chests, etc., etc. And then I, I, we can make a stash box for the player. We can make a variable size stash box, and we can also make a variable size inventory if we want. Say, like, make player has like backpacks and can carry 20 or 30 slots we can do some things to limit that so i'd like to come up with something like that in the equipment 
I labeled them as I advertised them as Diablo style stats. However, we know in Diablo, you can't double roll stats. And unfortunately right now, the way our system is, we can double roll stats and I need to get rid of that because like if you get move speed on boots, you shouldn't get move speed, move speed. You should only get one move speed and then it shouldn't even be an option anymore. And I want to handle that. And then I also want to do constant curve stats because let's talk about move speed, for example, right? Usually move speed comes in um, it increments of like, 10%, 15%, 20%, 25%. You don't have it going in a range right now. The way it is, it's just a range, right? It would roll, move speed would roll from anywhere between 15 20% as a float. So what I'd like to do is use constant curves so I can show you how to roll for a, using a float, you can roll for 10%, 15%, 20% using a float from any value to any value. And then what we could do is plus levels to abilities and then a better ability roll method in general. I don't like the one that we have now. Uh, the more I looked at it, I didn't like it. Um, there's a crafting NPC. There's as long as the concept is that you have a combination of items, some kind of combination of items that turn into a resulting item, we're gonna make a crafting NPC base class that can handle just morphing that into whatever your imagination can come up with in terms of um, uh, recipes and ingredients and resulting items right we can we could just go crazy with it and we'll do that with just one base and then you can turn it into whatever you want and then what i'd like to do is um i got sucked into playing path of exile for a while and i want to do crafting a little bit like theirs i want to do instead of how we do ours where it only rolls three stats or four stats what i want to do is say every equipment has the possibility for six stats and uh we're not going to do prefix suffix and stuff like that to start what we're going to do is just literally a uh, pure rng you have it, you know you picked it up and it rolled three and we're going to have a crafting system to where you could just add the other three and now it has six stats on it and we can make sure that it doesn't have double roll stats on it, etc. So we'll take care of that. And then I want to make an item shopkeeper that we can buy and sell things to any items that we want to. And then each item shopkeeper can have their own unique inventories where typically you could sell anything to them, but then what you're going to buy from them is unique, right? So this NPC sells these things and that NPC sells those things. So I'd like to make those item shopkeeper classes. And then I also want to make a specifically RNG Gamba equipment. I think that was really cool when I was playing Path of Exile. It was the first time I played Path of Exile here. And um, I think it was really cool that, that you could um, you could just buy you know for x amount of gold you could just buy a piece of equipment and it just rolls stats i think that's cool so i'd like to do an rng gamba equipment shopkeeper and then in the general category there's two general requests that i think are really good currently we have everything based off the camera angle is how we gather our angles but this gentleman liked to ask for client an authoritative client predicted mouse click essentially right we want to click the mouse on the client and have it immediately react so we can do all the rest of our client predicted things but we don't want to give it we don't want to allow the server to correct it if there's any issues we want to call it hey this is the authoritative click and a little bit of trust to the client there and if you do notice in path of exile 2 they do not do this they do not let it be client predicted if you have in any latency so if you have like 200 milliseconds lag or you join a different server in a different region in a different part of the world and you got 250 milliseconds lag you click the button and your character does not react until the uh, replicated event happened they do not have client predicted mouse clicks they have server authoritative mouse clicks in path of exile too so that was interesting playing that with a little bit of uh with a little bit of lag sometimes and then we're going to do flying damage numbers i think flying damage numbers are fun you don't have to do them but i think they're fun and then somebody asked for buttons and levers and the way i do buttons is using gameplay tags in a world subsystem and i haven't shown anybody world subsystems or subsystems in general and i think it's cool to be able to use this button subsystem and how everything communicates to it, how it communicates to itself and then the last thing is save game 
everybody needs to know how to save their data, right? But this isn't a database tutorial. So what I'm going to do is show you how to local save to disk. And if you know how to write database and you can get someone to hook it up, then um, you can just use these function timings and use the function calls and then just replace the body of the functions, you know, with your JSON and HTTP requests and all that stuff. You just replace all that. But for what we're going to do here in the tutorial, we'll just save it to disk for now. And uh, if you want to join in on what gets done and what the roadmap looks like and any, how this evolves in the future, join the Discord and hit us up and I'll see you then.